Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider Podcast. How's your week going? Are you looking forward to your summer holidays? Do you have anything booked? What are your plans? As always, I'd love to hear where you're going and your plans for the year. So email me directly, techblogwriter at outlook.com. But on today's show, I want to talk with Mike Tussaud, and he's the CEO and co-founder of Cloudian. And Michael Tussaud holds 36 patents and has also been a technology trailblazer for over 20 years. He co-founded Cloudian and Gemini Mobile Technologies and also built businesses and engineering platforms in the US, Japan and China. And for more than 10 years, Cloudian and Gemini Mobile have provided mission-critical carrier-grade infrastructure software which serve hundreds of millions of users. But now, of course, Cloudian is trailblazing distributed object storage for cloud and enterprise storage use cases. But what Cloudian really specializes in is object storage for enterprises, a form of unstructured data storage that eliminates the scaling limitations of that traditional file storage. And the results is enabling enterprises to quickly grow deployments without worrying or hitting any caps. Now, according to the research firm Gartner, 80% of enterprise data will be stored in some form of object storage by 2021. So many big, important topics to cover here. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to San Francisco, where Mike Tussaud, CEO and co-founder of Cloudian, is waiting to speak with us today. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Mike. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yes. Hi, Uh, my name is Michael. So I'm founder CEO of Cloudian. And uh, what we do is um, we do uh, enterprise object storage. So that's very large scale, single namespace, you know, geo distributed S3 compatible storage that can basically hold a virtually unlimited amount of data, enterprise grade. And we are the largest independent uh, object storage vendor in our space. And for those who are not familiar with what object storage is, it's basically bringing um, the same technologies as what's used in public clouds as in Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and that same type of um, you know large-scale uh, storage technology and bringing it as packaged software and running it on commodity Intel servers in your data center of choice. So, so you have you know the power of the cloud um, at at your at your own disposal. No, I'm yep. genuinely excited to get you on the show today because I recently read, according to research firm Gartner, I think it was eighty percent of enterprise data will be stored in some form of object storage by 2021, and that's not long away at all. So, <laughs> right? Can, can you tell me more about how Cloudian's platform provides infinite scalability and actually will allow users to access data from anywhere in the world, but most importantly, offer hybrid cloud deployments that combine cloud and on prem computing yes so really object storage is a, is a fundamentally different way of uh, implementing storage so rather than having um, a, a set of sort of discrete storage um, servers or systems each are bound by different location and different physical hardware the idea of object storage is to um, implement um, some software that makes any number of um, physical machines appear as a single storage device to you. Um, so that is uh, very powerful. And that, that's the basic concept of the cloud is to make, you know, an infinite number, um, whether it's one or whether it's, you know, thousands of computers appears a single one uh, to the uh, end user. So that's basically what, what we have built um, in terms of storage. So we, we, we can scale from a very small system um, and when your capacity needs um, is there, then you just add additional computers and our software would in the background move data around and so forth to balance things. But overall, it looks like um, you just got a bigger and bigger 
um, single storage device as opposed to every time you need a bigger storage device, you, you have to buy a new one and move your data from the old one to the new one. That's the old way. You know, the new way is you just keep adding hardware to your pool and the software makes it look like a single storage device. Um, and by nature, um, we're not limited to a single location. And that, that's a very big point as well because in traditional storage systems tend to be um, based on physical devices uh, or, or they, they expose the idea of a physical device. So then um, if you have to have data in different locations, then you explicitly have to have to have some way of copying data or synchronizing data across sites. But object storage um, by design, um, because we anyway have to move data in the background whenever you're adding capacity, um, it always appears as a single storage device, even though physically underneath it could be distributed across different data centers. So then the hybrid concept that you're asking for, Neil, really comes um, as an extension of this idea of you know geo distribution. So um, if if you could be moving data across different data centers that you own, um, then we certainly can also move the data from data centers you own to data centers that you don't own. It could be a public cloud um, in instance. So essentially, it's possible then to to make your storage pool to not only consist of um, storage devices that are in your own uh, data center, but also spread across other clouds, uh, be it private or public. Um, and that really is the, the, the you know, sort of true power of this, that you, you can address a single object and you know the object itself can be stored in any number of places that gives you very much improved availability. Um, it it make, makes your data much, much more resilient. Um, and uh, you know, overall, it gives you a lot more scalability and you know, ease of management. So you, you no longer have to manage based on number of devices that each um, IT operator can manage um, because you can basically with without software, you know whether you're managing a thousand computers or or ten computers, it's it's the same amount of work. The same headcount can manage that. So that that really is is the power of um, object storage and why um, it's really the only um, type of storage technology that is scalable enough. Um, where you know the cost of management does not scale linearly with the with the size of uh, systems that you have. That that's the only thing that that can scale enough to capture all the, um, um, you know the the amount of huge amount of you know data created by, you know different machines and all the new um, age of applications. Um, anything that needs you to scale. Uh, headcount with the amount of data that you're you're storing cannot really scale just because you know ultimately that that becomes the most mo that becomes the most expensive component. And if we just take a step back and zoom out just for a few moments and take a look at that changing data landscape, we're quickly starting to see the rise of AI, machine learning, and IoT, and how together. They're actually causing data to pile up to the point where it's no longer manageable for a lot of enterprises. So can you tell me a little bit more about your experiences with that and also how Cloudian is actually changing the way enterprises manage their data to, to actually overcome this challenge? Yes, um, and that is really the, the fundamental um, sea change that is you know, changing the, the world. Um, really, you know, the, the next 10, 20, 30 years, um, the the whole you know world you know sort of economy in is is going to be run by the amount of data by by what you can get in, out of the data. We were truly moving into the data economy, um, and in terms of um, the type of challenges that brings, it's really having to do with how do you um, get value out of the vast amounts of data that are being created how you how do you create some kind of structure out of the you know uh, out of the, the kind of a, a vast array of um, what appears to be unstructured data and and the key to this is um you know really sort of two parts one is just being able to store all this stuff um in a scalable enough fashion and a low enough cost way 
and be able to um, not require too much, you know, difficulties so that your um, your headcount, your your people can be um, focused on create uh, creating sort of value from the data. All right, so that that's number one, and and we we've been focused on solving that problem. And then the the, the next part of this is really having to do with metadata. In the metadata is basically data about the data, and um, you know the, the the kind of simple example of this is that you know, you know let's say that you are doing some AI and you are training um, an AI program to, you know, recognize um, the make, year, and car, uh, of, you know, model of cars coming down from a freeway, you know, you know, at you, at, you know, towards the camera. Um, you, you might run some training and find out that um, actually it works great except for um, where you have white cars against a cloudy background, you, you are wrong a lot of the time. So then, okay, so now suddenly you, now want to be able to train um, your system on um, only those training data that has light color cars against a whitish grayish in the background, right? So if you didn't have your metadata um, about your uh, cars and so on, all that kind of you know, training data, you, you will have to retrain across all the data again and, and it may or may not work. It's much more effective. You can just pull out the subset of data that's like that is white cars against cloudy, you know, background. So that that's what you know metadata allow, allows you to do is quickly subset a vast amount of data and pull out the set that you need and and really then you know be able to get value from it. And that is something that you are getting with you know Cloudy's object storage system. We we have. Um, um, you know, very strong metadata support plus, um, you know, user configurable uh, metadata fields and it can be extended. So you, you're able to tag it and, and you, you're able to tag all your you know, data items and you're able to, you know, subset, you're able to run, you know, to search on it to, to get um, all kinds of statistics and also to pull out subsets. And also um, we're able to use um, actually machine learning to automatically analyze your data objects and create tags uh, on the fly or in the background. So if you don't have people to sit there and tag your data, if the data did not come pre-tagged, um, it's possible to run AI programs that would actually look at a picture or look at a video or look at a text file and with reasonable probability estimate like what is in that piece of data and, and put those in as searchable tags. So suddenly a lot of data that you might have accumulated over time can can be brought to life um, by um, having having these metadata tags. So, so these are, you know, some of the examples of, of where it's all sort of going. So, so more and more, um, you know, the it's it's going to be about you know ease of storage and you know ease of metadata and, and the amount of you know power that you can get out of the metadata systems of, of, of your um, of, of your data storage system. Now, when I was researching you guys, one of the things that quickly stood out for me was that while other storage vendors are seeing a declining in their market share, Cloudian is experiencing rapid growth and backed by some pretty prestigious investors as well, including Goldman Sachs, Intel and Fidelity, to name but a few. And last last year, I think you also recently announced a $94 million, uh, in Series E funding. And only last week, the company was named one of the best cloud computing companies and CEOs to work for in 2019 based on, I think it was Glassdoor that I read this. So it, it really feels like Cloudian is really building momentum here. Can you tell me more about this rapidly increasing progress that you seem to be having at the moment? Yeah, it's it's really exciting times because um, you know we're really hitting the part of that you know exponential uh, sort of growth curve where it starts really really take off really go vertical. So um, it's quite exciting. So yeah, just a few highlights. Um, you know, this is our fourth year of consecutive you know, record revenue. Uh, we were growing very strongly. Um, there's a very strong overall industry acceptance of um, S3 as the de facto standard for this object storage world. And that standard is very important because it, it enables everybody to succeed. It enables, it enables the industry itself to succeed and to grow the overall pie. Um, and um, so, and you know, S3, just for those of you who don't know, is the, um, it's the 
um, API, it's the protocol that's used to access large um, storage pools um, like the one that Amazon has. And in fact, the protocol itself, you know, S3 is defined by Amazon, but it's being adopted by um, basically everybody else now in the industry uh, as the de facto on-premise um, scale-out object storage uh, APIs or protocols. Um, yeah, and uh, we, we're seeing um, continuous you know, increase in terms of customers. Um, we're um, the highest rated object vendor uh, in in the Gartner uh, Peer Insights, um, and that that's we, we we hold that one very dearly because that that's end users' appreciation of uh, what we do. And I think over ninety six percent of people surveyed in, in recommend us um, to someone else. Um, and uh, with that, um, and uh, we have announced um, partnerships with a, a large number of um, industry players such as Cisco, HPE, uh, Milestone, Rubrik, Quantum, Telestream, et cetera, Veeam, um, really a very wide variety. Um, and that that's really what a standard, a good standard implementation gets you is that you're able to work with everybody else. And that again, grows the whole ecosystem. In terms of the hybrid cloud that you mentioned before, um, we integrate um, really um, with uh, Amazon, with Microsoft, and also with Google. Um, and we have well over 350 um, um, reseller partners um, worldwide. Um, about 150, 150 of those were added in the past year. And including some very large national names like uh, CDW and Worldwide Technology, uh, we also have um, expanded the presence in EMEA, and uh, recently we also expanded more into APAC. EMEA now is close to between 40 to 45 percent of our overall uh, revenue, and continues to grow very fast. So we're really proud proud of that. And we launched a new global. Uh, managed service provider um, program as well recently, but I I just want to kind of just 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 bring this back a little bit. I think um, what you know a lot of this you know growth that we are seeing is a result of of hard work by a lot of people in everybody in our company over um, the past you know seven eight years that we've been around because. You, you don't really get into this kind of growth um, if your product isn't ready, if your support organization isn't ready, um, if you don't have already like your problems worked out with some of the early customers who were able to take a risk on you and you you just you know make make sure that you, you know, service them exactly right and do everything it takes to make them happy. We invested very heavily in all those areas. Um, and now, you know, the market's turning to us and, and starting to happen. Um, but, you know, we really approach this in, in a way that is, um, you know, humble and, and um, you know, just, just um, you know, ple- pleased to be growing, but, you know, recognizing the, the amount of work that went into this when, um, you know, very few people you know, recognize that um, the, the true potential of, um, you know, the space that we're in. And I'm glad you used the word humble there because at the end of every episode, I always say that technology actually works best when it brings people together. And again, Cloudian's unique culture seems to be equally as important as the technology at the heart of it. So can you maybe share a story behind the unique culture based on those three attributes for employees to model, which I believe are hungry, humble and honest? Yes, uh, thank you. I'm very happy to hear you say that. That is the, the... Cloudian um, company culture, the company values are sort of drilled into every single employee. Um, um, everyone, no matter how long you, you've been with at the company, you you will um, have to go go through this training. I, I still run from that training about once a month. Every one of our investors and most of our important strategic partners have also gone through um, this exact same training and hear the story behind like where these come from. But just to cut a long story short, um, these three H's, hungry, humble, and honest, came from really a very humble sort of beginning of the company. Because we, we started a company coming out of um, you know the Great Recession in um, 2011, where um, 
you know, there, there really wasn't a lot going on and the company went through some, you know, very tough times and, uh, especially in the beginning and, um, and, you know, truly humbling experiences. And that really, um, brought, brought the team together, you know, united by, a common hunger to succeed the, you know, common passion for the field that we are in and the kinds of problems that we're solving. Um, but always remaining humble. And finally, honest is the one that I think is, is most interesting because as I always say in my training, no CEO is going to stand up and tell you to not be honest. But what I'm here to tell you is um, the degree of honesty. Um, and we really push our all our employees and all our partners and all our investors to be fully and completely honest. So that means that if it, if it require, if we are completely honest on a, a RP response and it means that by putting down that the answer is no, we are going to be thrown out of that round of the RP. That's the level of honesty that we demand. We, we, we're not going to put down yes and hoping that we can survive the round and go back to negotiate it later. Um, that's the approach of a lot of, a lot of companies take, but we, we take a no compromise approach. Um, if we have a problem for a bug, you know, um, no matter how embarrassing, we, we, we would proactively re- reach out to our users, sit, sit them down, explain it to them. Um, and that over time has really started to pay off because it, it allows the company to, to, to operate on a, on a very consistent moral compass uh, in terms of how, how to treat customers, how to treat employees. Um, and it, you know, sort of pays back in, in a long, long run in terms of, you know, people just really respecting, um, you know, uh, us being sort of true to, you know, the set of values. We have had a lot of examples where we, you know, we were disqualified in, in an in earlier round of an RFP only to be invited back um, in, into the process, um, six months, nine, nine months down the road after, you know, the customer has had time to actually test some of the competitors that maybe were not quite as honest a, as we were in the response and find out that things that they thought should work is not working. Um, and we, you know, we, we would be invited back, back into the process. So that over long term is, is really, I think what sort of builds, a uh, in a success story. So, um, and you know, the reason why we do these culture values, um, or, or this training is because, you know, we, we want to, um, impart in every, every employee, you know, the, um, uh, set of, um, values and, and, you know, the moral compass so that they, they know how to, how to behave, um, and what's the, the company's um, desire for them to make that decision um, in situations far flung um, from the company? They, they, you know, they may be in some, you know, some end user somewhere very far away from the company, and to have to make make a decision right then and there, what am I going to say? Um, and, and, uh, you know, it's important that everybody in that position knows exactly what a company wants them to say. Right. So, uh, that, that, that is really why it's, it's, it's really important. It's, it's how, how to behave when no one else is watching is, is, is the, is the key here. And we are talking about a lot of complex technologies today. So just to help people listening understand the difference that you guys are making with some of the world's biggest brands out there, are there any particular use cases that you can share with us today that would just help any business leaders just completely get the kind of difference that you're making? Sure. I'll, I'll just give some examples. It's not it's not a be all and all. Um, so, for example, uh, we are um, in one of the top three-letter you know, TV broadcasters, um, where we are number one, replacing tape. Um, so we we're storing petabytes and petabytes of old media files that they pull out to, to use, uh, every now and then. So it's a large media archive. We, we also work with their media asset managers that, um, that they use for, um, creation of new, um, shows and so on. So that is one in the use case. It's, it sits somewhere between tape and, file storage. It's, it's, um, somewhere in, in between the two. 
Uh, we also have um, a large international, uh, one of the largest uh, car makers in the world. They deploy us um, across the globe in different data centers. Um, I think two data centers every country. And um, I think half a dozen countries right now going to maybe a dozen or more. And um, they standardize on us um, as the data storage pool for a range of use cases from backup and archive to internal storage of service to content management to machine learning to um, in, in autonomous driving research, et cetera. We have an Ivy League university that's using us to store basically brain uh, imaging data. They are trying to image like every neuron in um, a slice of a brain. Um, and the ultimate goal is to store enough data to be able to store um, the exact neural connections of a full human brain. But they're probably years away from that. But um, but that's a huge amount of data as well. Um, we have a local city in the state of California that has um, a, a fleet of city buses where they have video surveillance camera on, on those buses. And in real time, they're using... Um, uh, wireless networking to move the videos from the buses into a Cloudian storage system that's then connected to metadata tagging and searching and also connected to um, the emergency response um, uh, departments in the police and so forth that, that will be able to access in the bus camera data at any point in time in, in case of emergency happens or they're able to go back and search um, for something that happened in the past. We also have three national health agencies in three different countries, um, storing, managing, archiving medical uh, records, uh, research data, and so on. So that, um, you know, so that really kind of gives you a, a sort of overview of, of things. So you're looking at healthcare, you're looking at Research, you, you're looking at sort of Internet of Things, like that in a bus case or that um, car company. You're looking at media and entertainment, like, uh, and then uh, you, you're looking at um, AI and machine learning as well. So it's all the, these are kind of cases that we're, we're we're seeing a lot of a lot of uptake. And did I also read recently that you teamed up with Cisco to deliver, I think it was limitless scalable storage and seamless data management, but for hybrid cloud environments? Because that sounds an incredibly exciting work that you're doing there too. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, uh, Cisco is a leader in, in enterprise um, data centers uh, and, and in hybrid cloud. I think that they're, they're one of the you know, sort of original enablers of the internet. And um, we, we've been working on a partnership for a while. And uh, what we recently announced is um, that our you know, Cloudian um, leading object storage system works uh, has been validated on Cisco's uh, UCS uh, server platform to make it easier for um, enterprise IT customers to um, deploy and uh, move data between uh, on-premise and um, into the cloud. So a true, you know, hybrid kind of use case. Um, and uh, having a Cisco validated design, it, it means a lot because it, it means that, you know, Cisco's um, vast reach of um, sales team and also selling partners and their end user um, base are able to deploy you know, Cloudian in, in their environments with proven, validated, tested um, in, you know, solutions. And so it's, it's faster time to market with lower risk um, and uh, really be able to help them to unlock the full value of their data. And looking towards the future, is there anything that particularly excites you on that road ahead right now that uh, you're particularly looking forward to? Um, yes, there, there are a lot of things. I think, you know, the, the, the age of data has really arrived and uh, that, that is incredibly exciting. And I think we're really just scratching the surface. Um, so I think now uh, everybody um, is starting to agree with us that um, hybrid cloud is going to really dominate. Um, and even Amazon has recently moved to um, offer and uh 
on-premise solution called uh, Outposts, right? So, so that that's really a clear indication that everybody you know, recognizes that hybrid will be the way to go. And we we've been saying this since we started back in 2011. Um, and so, so that's why you're 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 seeing us becoming um, partners and at at the crossroads with um, a lot of different companies, whether they are traditional on-premise. Um, vendors like um, HPE and Cisco and Lenovo, or their you know, cloud players like um, you know Rubrik and and um, Amazon and Microsoft and so forth. We are um, really in in the middle and sort of enabling a lot of these use cases to connect. And you, you're also starting to see us connect into these data intensive industries such as media entertainment, video surveillance, healthcare, research, and so on. Really you know, um, being able to tap into them and allowing their, you know, data to get managed very easily. Um, but what, what's really exciting for us is to look, look forward into the future with all this new you know, developments in, you know, machine learning and AI that's coming along. And especially like, you know, using AI to, um, you know, tag your data and to um, create metadata from your data. Now you, you're really starting to get to a positive feedback loop of, um, you know, AI making the data easier to consume for other AI programs that can then get even more value from your data. Um, and that's really where we, we're, we're going to see. It's like, you know, um, when the PC was fir- first invented, um, people thought of it as, you know, it's a replacement for maybe you know, a typewriter, right? So it's, it's a word processing unit. And then it ran, you know, you know spreadsheets. It's like, wow, that's amazing. And um, and it was, you know, only years later that um, we were able to unlock the full potential, right, of the PC and of the internet. And that created a whole new gain in, you know, IT productivity. And I think for, for you know, data storage and for the cloud, we're, we're really at the, the you know word processor spreadsheet in era where we we're it's amazing what we can do today but this enabling foundation is going to create a whole new you know ecosystem and and a, and a whole new IT infrastructure that will you know drive us I- into the next age that um, it's even not easy to sort of you know imagine that right now and that is what's truly exciting and for anyone listening that wants to just delve a little bit deeper into the subject and everything that we've talked about today, could you just remind the listeners of where they can find you guys online and maybe even contact a member of your team if they do have any additional questions? Yeah, sure. You you can accomplish both by going to um, our website, so www.cloudian.com. And once you're there, there will be a little pop up that will show up after a few seconds and say if you if you have any questions so just just type in there and um someone will either get into a chat session with you straight away or they'll phone you right back fantastic well like you said earlier in the episode there there are so many indications right now that hybrid cloud is set to dominate everything but even though we've talked about a lot of complex technologies there i think one of the most important things is how you put people and the culture and how that is equally as important as the technology at the heart of everything that you do and it's it's fantastic what you do and i just thank you for sharing that with me today thank you sure thank you neil How the rise of AI, machine learning and IoT is beginning to cause data to pile up to the point that it is no longer manageable is a problem I think we're going to be hearing more and more about. So I was fascinated to hear how Cloudian is changing the way enterprises manage their data. And as a result, other storage vendors are seeing declining market share. Cloudian has actually experienced rapid growth backed by prestigious investors, including Goldman Sachs, Intel and Fidelity, which speaks volumes. But that's just my takeaways. I'm sure you've got more insights and more expertise than I have. And I want to get those opinions out of you and onto this podcast. So please email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. Get me on Twitter at Neil C. Hughes or pop by my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. You can find every single episode that we've ever recorded as we race towards 1000 episodes 
But more than anything, I created this platform so everybody can make their voice heard. So, please, I hope that you will use it, even if it's just to send me a quick hello. But <laughs> I would much sooner you send feedback and your questions. And if you'd like to come on the show, we can arrange for that too. But that's it for another episode. That's all that's left for me to say is a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.